Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. For many fans, The Rise of Skywalker left two big questions unanswered. How was Palpatine able to return in The Rise of Skywalker, and was he really slinging dong and having kids across the galaxy? Well, we may finally have some answers to those questions as the film's novelization is set to release. In The Rise of Skywalker, Emperor Palpatine was shown very early in the film as having been alive and orchestrating the Sith from behind the scenes, but no explanation was ever provided in the film as to how this was possible considering Darth Vader tossed his ass down a gigantic ventilation shaft in Return of the Jedi. When Kylo Ren asked Palpatine how he was alive, Palpatine merely muttered to him the well-known phrase from Revenge of the Sith, the dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Additionally, the film revealed that Palpatine apparently had a son and that his son was Rey's father, something I still think is whack but whatever. With the film's novelization close to being officially released, some fans have been able to get early access to the novel, which has provided some insight and answers to those questions left unanswered in the film. One such revelation was how Emperor Palpatine was able to return in The Rise of Skywalker again as he was last seen plummeting down a ventilation shaft on the second Death Star right before it blew up. Essentially, the Rise of Skywalker novelization tells us that, following his death on the second Death Star, Sith cultists were able to create a clone of Palpatine. Emperor Palpatine was then able to essentially transfer his essence into this clone, which is pretty much pulled right from the comic series Dark Empire by Tom Veach. In Dark Empire, Palpatine was able to transfer his essence from clone to clone, achieving a sort of immortality in doing so. The reason why Palpatine is depicted as decrepit and nearly falling apart in The Rise of Skywalker is because his immense power in the dark side is destroying his clone's body. Wielding the dark side of the force is extremely detrimental to the wielder's physical form, which results in the degradation of the dark wielder's body. The stronger someone is in the dark side, the more notable the degradation of their physical form would be. During the prequels, Palpatine used the dark side to essentially conceal his own body's decay, so it does make Makes sense that a clone of someone such as Palpatine, who is arguably one of, if not the greatest and strongest Sith of all time, would not be able to fully contain his essence without the severe degradation of its physical form. The tubes we see him hooked up to in The Rise of Skywalker are keeping him alive and combating the dark side's destruction of his physical form, but it's gotten to a point where those tubes are close to being exhausted of the fluids that are keeping Palpatine alive. Hastening Palpatine Palpatine's dark plans to return, as his essence must quickly find a new vessel to contain itself in. The novelization also provides information about Emperor Palpatine's son, who is also a clone of Palpatine, albeit basically a failed Palpatine clone that wasn't able to store Palpatine's dark side powers. The clone was able to continue to live, however, and actually father Rey. According to Screen Rant's Thomas Bacon, during the scene in the Rise of Skywalker novelization, when Rey is feigning taking part in the Sith ritual on Exegol to trick Palpatine right before she passes the lightsaber to Ben, she has visions of her grandfather's past. This passage in the book reveals after Return of the Jedi, Palpatine thrust his consciousness into a clone body. However, the transfer was imperfect, and members of the Sith Eternal worked tirelessly to engineer a new vessel of Palpatine's essence. One of these attempts is described as a useless, powerless failure who is a not quite identical clone. While this body wasn't fit to house Palpatine's power, it was still able to live and eventually become Rey's father. The novelization will essentially answer two glaring questions that were left unanswered in The Rise of Skywalker, which were how did Palpatine survive being thrown down a gigantic ventilation shaft in Return of the Jedi, and was Palpatine really sling and dangle throughout the galaxy and having children, which I found hard to believe watching that film for the first time because, I mean, look at my man. He is decrepit as shit. 
One question that I'd still like an answer to is why did Palpatine want Kylo Ren to kill Rey at the film's onset, when Palpatine wanted Rey to become his essence's next vessel? So I hope we get an answer to that. If you have a theory on that, let me know down in the comments. Even though The Rise of Skywalker novelization sheds some light on how Palpatine was able to return in The Rise of Skywalker, as well as having a son, and even if I did enjoy The Rise of Skywalker, having to address these pretty big canon questions questions in the film's novelization because they weren't properly addressed in the film itself is a pretty big indictment against the film, and I know that is something that a lot of people have issues with. Apparently, scenes were cut from The Rise of Skywalker that would have potentially answered these questions, at least to some degree, but they didn't make it to the film's final version, so I feel like that's a moot point. I've mentioned this previously, but The Rise of Skywalker felt like Abrams cramming what he felt the stories for Episode 8 and 9 should have been had he helmed the trilogy, and basically crammed the stories of two films into one film. Because of that, pacing was an issue, as the movie was all over the place in the first act or two. Additionally, scenes that myself and many Star Wars fans thought should have been added to address significant canon questions were apparently cut from the film's theatrical cut due to the film's length. Danny and I are both fans of the sequel trilogy and have been happy with Disney's purchase of Lucas Films for the most part. With that said, I really hope that Disney learned its lesson with the sequel trilogy. Once Star Wars films return in 2022, I just really hope that Lucasfilm and Disney have a cohesive story arc that's been planned out for however many films it takes to tell that story. As Disney has said, they don't want to be beholden to trilogies, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with having multiple directors creating films for a series of Star Wars films, but there has to be a single and cohesive story arc that the directors and films are working towards so that issues like having to answer significant unanswered questions from a film in the film's novelization can be avoided. But what's your thoughts on this? How do you feel that the Rise of Skywalker novelization sheds light on Palpatine being a clone and that his son was a failed clone of himself? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's on Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.